Hi, welcome back. All right, so translations today. Uh, we're only going to spend one day of class time dealing with translations, and that's because they are generally easier to understand than some of the other ones that we're going to look at. A translation slides a figure from one location to another. So we see here in the center of a screen this star, and I can take that image, or pre-image rather, and shift it to another location. That would be a translation. Notice I haven't turned it at all. I haven't, it's not spun, it's no, there's no rotation. I didn't flip it over upside down, there's no reflection. It's just simply shifted to another location. Now, from its original spot, I can shift it right, or I can shift it left. I can go up, or I can go down. Or I could do a combination of those. For example, here if I go right and up, then I end up in this position. And I can see where I've traveled, or how I've traveled, in what directions, by using what's known as a vector. Now here, a vector will start at one point, and I'm going to draw, whoops, got the wrong arrow, let's try that again. I'm going to draw an arrow that goes from that point to the same point on the figure, it's just on the other one, it's where its new location is. Okay, so now when I look at that, I've got this vector, and that vector is drawn as a ray, it's got a starting point here at the initial object, and an ending point up here, same position on the image, and that vector has two components. That component, or set of components rather, is the directions that I traveled to get there. So here I said I went right some distance, and then I went up some distance. So these would be the components of that vector. This one's considered the horizontal component, and this one of course then is the vertical component. Horizontals always go right or left, verticals always go up or down. So when I look at the horizontal components and the vertical components with a vector, we write it in what's called vector component form. The vector component form is really easy to understand. We start off with these things that kind of look like parentheses, but they're pointed, like so. It's going to look a lot like a coordinate point but with pointy parentheses instead of curved ones. We put a comma in the middle, just like we would before. Now with a point, we give our x coordinate here and our y coordinate there. Remember, x is a side to side or a horizontal movement. Y is an up or a down, a vertical movement. So here with our component form, we'll put the horizontal component first, and remember this is going to be a distance, and we'll put the vertical distance in the second position. So let's say this particular one traveled 10 units to the right and then went up 4 units. Then it, my vector component form for that particular set of movements would be 10 to the right, 4 up. Remember, right and up are considered positive numbers, left and down are considered negatives, just like what we do with points. Okay, so vector component form is a new way now that we're going to have to describe translations. We will still have coordinate notation. We're going to look at how that works on this next example. All right, so on your note sheet, you should see this image. You should see the pre-image of these three points and this already graphed triangle. One thing I do want to point out on the graph, these are counting by twos. So this is two, negative one. This one's two, four, zero. Okay. Spaces in between are odd numbers, so this would be 2 there, 3, 2, 4, 5, so that's 3, 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and label our points, A, B, and C. A, we said was at 3, 5, B at 2, negative 1, and C at 4, 0. All right, so the set of translations that we're going to do here, we are going to translate Six left and five down. Six left and five down. All right, so what I just said about vector component form, remember, 
vector component form in this case. We list in brackets, or these pointy parentheses, how far it goes right or left first, and then how far it goes up or down second. So in this case, we said it's going to go 6 left. And remember, left is a negative movement, so we've got negative 6. And 5 down. Down is a negative movement, so we have negative 5. Now we've worked previously with um, coordinate notation, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. All right, so we're going to take point A, and we're going to move it by those directions. In this case, A starting at 3, 5 is going to go 6 left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 5 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So A prime is there. Now we'll do B. B is currently at 2, negative 1. 6 left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So B prime is here. And our last one, C. 6 to the left, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that becomes C prime. Okay, so we'll go ahead and connect those dots. And then we're going to go over here to the side and we're going to write down what their coordinates are. Okay, so currently A prime is at negative 3, 0. It's on the x-axis. B prime is at negative 4, negative 6. And C prime at negative 2, negative 5. Okay, notice what happened. Compare point A to point A prime. Compare this negative 3, 0 to that positive 3, 5. Look at the x values. It went from 3 to negative 3, which is a decrease of 6. And the y values went from 5 to 0 which is a decrease of 5. So a decrease of 6 for x and a decrease of 5 for y. Notice how that compares here. A decrease of 6 on x and a decrease of 5 on y. So those component forms are actually telling us what to do to the x and y values of our points. And we can check the same thing with b and b prime. 2, 1, or 2, negative 1, sorry, to negative 4, negative 6. So from 2 to negative 4, it's going left 6, that's subtracting 6. And going from a negative 1 to a negative 6, that's subtracting 5. So what we're actually doing with our points is we start with any point, transform it, remember that's what our little arrow means. And here we said that we took the x value and subtracted 6, and the y value decreased by 5, so we'll subtract 5. And that becomes the coordinate notation of this translation. Okay, so the problems may ask you to do one of two things. They can ask you to give the coordinate notation or the component, the vector component form. But look at how similar they are. They still both involve the minus 6, and they both involve a minus 5. Okay, so the what first number tells us to go right or left. Remember, left goes negative, right is positive. And the second number tells us up or down. Up is positive, down is negative. All right, so one more example. We've got point L, M, and N, and we've got them graphed. Once again, we're counting by twos, so be aware of that. In this case, we're going to translate right 7 and down 6. Okay, so right 7, that's a positive movement of 7. So our vector component form.
right 7 is a positive 7. Down 6 would be a negative value, so we have a negative 6. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph our points. Take each point. I forgot to label them. So this one's L. M and N. All right, we're going to move each one right 7 and down 6. So starting with L, 2, 4, 6, 7, 2, 4, 6. So L prime is now at 7, 0. N goes right 7, down 6. So there's our N prime. And M goes right 7, down 6, to get to M prime. Now, given what we talked about on the last screen, we know that coordinate notation should show a right 7 and a down 6. Should show a plus 7 and a minus 6. And let's double check that with point L. So L prime is at the point 7, 0. Okay, compare L to L prime. We started at 0, 6. And now we're at 7, 0. So from 0 to 7 goes right 7. And from 6 to 0 goes down 6. So that one worked. Let's check the same with point M and M prime. M prime is currently at 4, negative 5. So let's see, from negative 3 to positive 4. If I look at the x's, from a negative 3 to a positive 4 is an up 7, or a right 7, I'm sorry. And a 1 to a negative 5 tells us down 6. So that all agreed. All right, so our coordinate notation would be take every point x, y, and transform it by adding 7 to x and subtracting 6 from y. Now, if by some chance you're just going up or you're just going right or left, where you don't have one of the movements. So if I'm just going up and I don't have a right or a left, then I'd leave this horizontal value as a 0. The only thing that would change when you move up would be the y's. Likewise, if I'm moving left but I'm not going up or down, then I'm going to change the left or right number but leave the y alone. So that could happen as well. Alright, so that's your homework for this evening.